second upload for today is with regard to sanity and sobriety and um, basically the recovery that I had since 2006 as a light worker. Um, basically, uh, since 2006, I've been doing fellowship work, uh, addiction studies, etc., self development, and all of that, you know, kind of um, study that has helped with um, my own experiences and that has helped with others' experiences as well. So, um, as I've mentioned in this violation of human rights, um, the most serious of the violations would have to be the confinement and restrictions that have been um, implemented as tactics in a spiritual violence assault of me as a Royal Angelic Light Worker in Tralee County, Kerry, Ireland. As I've mentioned, there's been ancestral assault and um, identity theft and there has been defamation of my character. Um, sobriety, um, whether you're drinking or not, um, is what happens when you are or whether you aren't drinking or using or abusing or whatever. There are some people that are sober as a judge and are insane in their behaviours and insane with their accusations and assumptions and aspersions. So it's not always um, an addict that is insane. Sometimes the dry, sober behaviour of individuals is more insane than any individual in addiction. So um, the point I'm getting to is that there are individuals that have caused this uh, human rights violation and that have been quite insane in their behaviour. And the defects of character, uh, most notably that I've noticed, have been um, a deluded sense of superiority, um, a deluded sense of um, being um, within a position of authority to um, defame and to uh, disrespect another person. Um, as I've mentioned, I've been defamed and um, as I've also mentioned, I've experienced financial abuse. Um, the matters of freedom to travel and freedom to move uh within any you know context um is a human right and uh my right to a career my right to a family my right to medical care and my right to travel have all been affected simply due to financial abuse uh this financial abuse started over a decade ago when i experienced the assault and defamation um, that occurred that people had concealed to the best of their ability within this community. But due to it being broadcasted online, um, it wasn't concealed very well. And um, even though they've attempted all tactics of ostracizing and withholding information and non-engagement and non-consultation, um, the facts remain the same. There has been um, an assault, not only of my character and reputation and good name, but also um, financial abuse, theft and exploitation. And all of these um, tactics of these individuals that are um, <sighs> perpetrating these offences is um, an issue for authorities and politicians to acknowledge. Um, as an educator, as a professional, as a graduate of Hibernia College and the University of Limerick, um, as a law-abiding citizen that has been defamed very severely and that has experienced obstructions of justice and legal violations while people are imposing and um, intruding upon my life um, and my privacy and attempting um, in the most insane manner to control the uh, factors that affect my human rights. So basically, um, this situation that's occurring is uh, quite insane and uh, mental health professionals in particular and members of recovery and fellowship um, are duty-bound 
to address this insanity. Um, targeting a victim and survivor of these kind of vendettas in a community um, as a means of facilitating an avoidance of justice or av an avoidance tactic of them uh, not confronting what they owe or not confronting what they've done um, is absolutely sinful and outrageous. Um, as I've said, I've experienced two unlawful detainments by mental health professionals uh, only since being married in 2015. Um, I've been misdiagnosed with um, ailments or illnesses or mental health um, diagnoses that I don't display the symptoms of. Um, I've been prescribed medication that has been extremely harmful um, and other issues um, pertaining to spirituality etc have um, been involved in these matters of um, what I've just referred to. So basically um, this is my daily share of um, how it is as a victim of vendetta and violations. Um, it's not comfortable for anyone to speak openly or publicly or honestly about the facts of a matter but um, authorities and politicians are fully aware from my victim impact statement of what I've endured and they still have not confronted me with the uh, protection order that I have requested and that I'm entitled to. Um, so as a member or as a member of the fellowship uh, that worked very hard in recovery to be experiencing identity theft, ancestral assault, defamation, financial abuse, um, to be witnessing children's rights violations, um, all these offences, um, there's been at least five ombudsmen that I've contacted with regard to the offences that I've experienced. Not one of them have acknowledged the wrongdoings that were perpetrated against me. Um, as a light worker um, that has been assaulted and damaged and violated and victimised, um, it's a sad sign of the times, as I keep saying. Um, there has been spiritual gifts and blessings um, of mine that I achieved, that I worked for um, on my spiritual journey, that um, individuals, imposters, have, um, you know, laid claim to and that have exploited and, you know, <clears throat> that they have damaged also, I might add. And um, this is more serious than, you know, petty lies about um, individuals that say, oh, this person's a threat to society, this person is saying that. Pettiness. The magnitude of the damage done by the offenders and their offences is a lot more serious and is actually the issue that needs to be confronted and contained and addressed and acknowledged. Um, people that violate privacy and that um, claim nonsense, unsubstantiated, um, you know, the issue of recovery involves amends and once a person makes amends, um, you know, that's pretty much, you know, a closed chapter then. But there seems to be a tactic by certain individuals that just like to rehash the past and to play the same record, the same tune, um, without even knowing the facts or the, uh, you know, seriousness of how they've intruded with their comments and claims and worsened those comments and claims with even further defamation. So um, the insanity and their wrongdoings and their offences are for them to address. Um, live and let live, mind your own side of the street, keep your own side of the street clean. All those kind of nuances and um, mottos um, are what's relevant to any person's sanity or sobriety. So the people that have involved themselves in my personal life and that have defamed me and that have uh, attempted to uh, cause further offences um, really need to address their own wrongdoings going back to 2005 when they were involved in the issue of sexual assault 
and revenge porn and defamation, which is a lot more serious. So um, there's the other recent issues that involve the violation of uh, children and women's rights and human rights that they also need to address. So um, as a spiritual being also, um, I think it's important that all those out there that have been made aware of um, phenomenal progress in Tralee County, Kerry, Ireland, um, I hope they're aware of um, what's been involved and the violations and the damage that has been done to innocent life. Um, as well as that, the issue of whistleblower protection for victims of these offenders um, is still being awaited in Tralee County, Kerry, Ireland. Um, I am awaiting acknowledgement of my request that politicians and authorities are still to um, provide because um, this issue against a law-abiding citizen as a victim and survivor um, doesn't send 